Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is the experimental Chrysler Hemi engine you've probably never heard of. You're going to notice today's video looks a little bit different than the typical Dead Dodge Garage Engine Wednesday video. On a normal day, I'm showing you tearing down or building a classic Chrysler engine out in the shop. I'm not in the shop today for a couple different reasons. First, I'm in a giant feud with my neighbor. Second, the engine I want to talk about today may have existed in real life at some point. There are pictures of one, but I certainly can't find one today to show you. This is something very unique. It's an image that's been making the rounds on the internet. I had no idea this engine existed at all until like a few weeks ago. I've been thinking about it more and more and wishing I could get my hands on one. And so I decided I wanted to do a video on the subject. To me, this is very, very interesting stuff. I've always been a huge nerd for the engineering behind these things the decisions that were made at the design stage. And so seeing a direct line between a classic Chrysler engine family and the revolutionary Hemi from the 50s, that excites me a little bit. The image that's been making the rounds on the internet is this one. This comes from Alpar, and I know that because of the font of the text there in the middle of it. You can find all kinds of cool, useful information on Alpar. Stuff about the various engine families Chrysler built, different factories, different car lines, all sorts of neat stuff. I saw one post about this engine on Allpar, and I saw a couple other forum posts about it. I found one picture outside of this, and that's basically all the information I've got. This engine was the A221 development engine. This is essentially a hemi-type cylinder head dropped on top of a flathead Chrysler block. It took a little bit more science than that to make this work, and that's really what I want to show you today. I happen to have a diagram of the basic engine layout showing the different things that were changed to make all of this work, and I just think it's neat. The basic engine we're talking about here is Chrysler's Spitfire inline six flathead engine. This was used for decades by Chrysler. There was also a smaller version used by Plymouth and Dodge. These measured front to back approximately 25 inches while the smaller ones measured 23. Aside from the sizing differences, they're very, very similar animals. It's essentially the same architecture. This was the basis Chrysler used to create the A221 Hemi development engine. Here's a diagram of the basic flathead six layout. When we go to look at this Hemi engine, you're going to notice a lot of similarities. These are not cross-flow engines. The intake and exhaust are on the same side. This engine was never designed to make a whole crap ton of power. They're relatively torquey, relatively economical. I've had several of these running in vehicles over the years, and I like them. I can't say I like them as much as, say, the small block LA Chrysler engine. Notice the cam is mounted in the block there that is at the passenger side, underneath those manifolds roughly. You can see the tappet covers behind the exhaust manifold. That covers the tappets, which ride directly on the lobes of that camshaft. These actuate the valves, which are mounted in the block on a flathead engine. For the Hemi development engine, this situation would be changed around a little bit, because the Hemi uses rocker arms in the cylinder head for the overhead valves. These would have to be actuated from the same cam tunnel, except it was changed slightly. And I'll show you that on the diagram in a minute here. Again, this is a flathead engine, so it's just got a big flat chunk of iron on the very top. There are six spark plugs screwed into it because, of course, this is a six-cylinder. You can see the big heavy-duty crank there. You can see the floating oil pickup at the bottom of the pan. Note there is no filter shown on this diagram. Not all of these engines had oil filters. Some did. These were a replaceable element canister type filter, which would usually be mounted over on the other side of the block. Now here's that first picture of the A221 development engine again. Just so you can quickly compare this to the flathead, there are so many similarities between the two. You can see the same tappet covers back there. You can see the intake, which is mounted on this side, has a relatively similar port layout to the flathead 6. Note, although you can see an exhaust pipe over here, this is not the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold is actually flipped to the other side, and this thing has a cross-flow head just like the later Hemi. There is a preheat section attached to the bottom of the intake. That's what we're looking at here. Note there is also an oil filter housing mounted on this side of the block on the Hemi development engine. You can see the fuel pump mounted there. I'm sure that is similar to the flathead. It sure looks like it is. Also right behind that is the oil pump because they moved the camshaft for this engine. That might be a special piece. Now here's the business end of the A221 Hemi. Of course, if you're familiar with Chrysler's Hemi engines, this should look pretty familiar to you. It is a dual rocker shaft design with exhaust on one side and intake on the other. There are some details carried over from the flathead, though. Note the spark plugs are ganged together in pairs. This is exactly the same as the flathead engine. 
When you look at the upper part of this photo, you'll see the hemispherical combustion chamber. It looks exactly like you would expect, but the spark plugs are mounted off to the side in the chambers, and you can see that does vary. It's in a right-left, right-left configuration, again the same as the flathead engine. Looking at the lower section of the head there, you can see a large cutout. That would have been open to the crankcase area of the flathead. There would have been holes there that previously housed valves, and through those holes would be extending push rods. Like all Hemi engines, because of the dual rocker setup and the far away exhaust rocker, special push rod considerations were required to get these valves actuated correctly. And so you can see that row of holes there. They too, like the spark plugs, are in an alternating configuration. It goes exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. I suspect that was the same valve order as the flathead, and the camshaft was essentially interchangeable, probably not actually interchangeable. It's a similar beast, and because this head had to work on the flathead, it had to share basic architecture elements with it. Here's the tightest zoom I can get on this development head so we can take a closer look at the details. Again, you can see the spark plugs, right? And then left. And then you can look here and see the pushrod holes. I'm fairly certain these are the exhaust because the exhaust valve would have been on the far side of the head and these would have gone to the intake. Without seeing this head in place on the engine in more detail, it's kind of hard to tell which way is up here, but I'm fairly certain the top section seen here in the photo is the intake side. Yeah, these are the openings for the push rods here. I do notice this cutout on the exhaust side of the cylinder head. The only picture we have of this engine complete is looking from the intake side, so I don't really know what that was for. It's really interesting looking at this rocker layout. It's very, very similar to the later V8s. It's almost identical to a first generation Hemi, and even the second generation Hemi is very much like this. You can see these are adjustable rocker arms. That makes good sense. The flathead would have had solid lifters. The original first generation V8 Hemi did actually start life with hydraulic lifters. It was always intended to have those to reduce operating noise. Now here's another interesting detail I only just noticed. Look at the intake valves. Note the edge of the intake valve is a whole lot closer to the edge of the combustion chamber. Yes, the exhaust valve is much smaller, but look at that gap. Now look at this. That is the same configuration as the 426 second generation Hemi. The chambers in that engine were canted to move the valve gear upward, make the head a little bit narrower, and help fit it into cars. And it's interesting to see the same design used here. This wouldn't have been for fitment in a car because of course this is an inline engine, so moving the chamber one way or the other doesn't really change anything. This would have been to aid in the valve gear arrangement. I'm sure what this did was move the exhaust rocker a little bit closer to the intake side so it was possible to get that push rod through to it. Now this is the other picture of the A221 development engine, the original Hemi prototype, which I found on the internet. The elephant in the room. There are two engines in this photograph. Obviously we're talking about the engine on the right here, which is very clearly a Hemi. On the left is another experimental Chrysler prototype engine. This was a dual overhead camshaft version of the Flathead 6. Obviously, this would have had a very special cylinder head and a whole bunch of special parts to match. I haven't been able to find any real-life pictures of that engine. It was considered, but they developed the Hemi instead. Presumably because it was much simpler and cheaper. This shows the most important change they had to make to the Flathead to make all of this work. The camshaft is over on the passenger side of the engine, just like the Flathead 6. But apparently, according to the little bit of information I was able to find, it was actually moved upward in the block somewhat. And obviously, on this diagram, you can see that the lifters, or camshaft followers, were tipped over slightly. This, again, would have been to aid with pushrod alignment. In the Flathead 6, these lifters would run straight up and down, because the valves are located right here in the head surface. On this engine, they actually had to change the casting of the flathead block to accommodate that. This weird multi-section box on this drawing is the exhaust manifold. This is the only view of it we've got. Again, I don't have any pictures of this engine from any other angle, but the passenger side showing the intake and the single barrel carburetor. But again, looking at the general layout here, it looks just like a later Hemi. Looking at the complete engine picture again, you can pick out all kinds of cool details. For one thing, it had a big gigantic chrome valve cover. Look at the spark plug wire design on this thing. 
Those spark plug wires look almost exactly like the production pieces that would be used later. They have those special umbrella boots up at the top, and they would have had solid cores going down to the spark plugs mounted deeper in the head as well. You can also see a chrome breather toward the front of the engine. Also interesting, the side covers or tappet covers have been chromed, and you can see a road draft tube there, which also appears to be shiny. This thing is mounted to a fancy chrome display stand. I don't know if this engine was actually shown in public, but seeing all the dress-up items on it sure makes it seem like that was the intention. Now I've done several videos on first generation Chrysler Hemi engines over the past few months. And in one of those videos, I explained that Chrysler was the first to mass produce a Hemi headed engine in America for cars. I did not and would not suggest that Chrysler came up with the Hemi cylinder head design. They didn't. They did start developing it earlier in the 1940s, and it was put to use in an inverted V16 airplane engine. Because of the end of World War II, that engine was never put into production, and only a few examples ever existed. A company called Ardune had a Hemi conversion head for the flathead Ford in the late 1940s, roughly around the time that Chrysler was developing this engine. Again, it wasn't their idea, but they put it to good use in production engines starting in 1951. And obviously we're still talking about those engines today. Just that fact tells you how successful they were. Unfortunately, information on this engine is very limited. I don't know how many were produced. It could not have been very many. This was essentially an advanced design study testing the Hemi layout. It ultimately was produced in the V8 design, and Hemis have been V8s ever since, at least in Chrysler world. But it sure is interesting, to me at least, to look at these historical photos and draw as many details out of them as is possible. To take a look at the basic Hemi design and see what survived out of this prototype engine to the ones that were built. If by some miracle you have any more information on the Chrysler A221 development engine, or you've seen one, or you've seen more pictures of one, I would love to know about that. So please drop that information in the comments on this video. And if by some miracle someone out there knows where this prototype engine is, if it survived to the present day, which is unlikely, well, I'd like to know about that too. Again, obviously this video is very different from the ones I typically produce. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know that in the comments, because there are a lot more videos I could make about engines in this way. Like the Hemi 6 from Australia, for example, which I can almost assure you we'll be hearing about in the comments on this video. Next week, I'm sure I'll be back out in the shop building a Slant 6, or a 318, or maybe a 426 Hemi, who knows? Until then, as ever, thank you very much for watching. And remember, Hemis are neat.